In this lecture, you'll learn how to configure VLAN access ports with a lab demo. So I've got a simple topology for the lab here. I've got a single switch, switch one, and I've got a couple of engineering PCs plugged in there. Eng1 is plugged into port fast0 slash 1. It's got IP address 10.10.10.10. And Eng2 is plugged into fast0 slash 2. And it's in the same IP subnet with IP address 10.10.10.11. I've also got a sales PC, sales3, which is plugged into fast0 slash 3. And it's in a different IP subnet with IP address 10.10.20. .12. Right now, I haven't done any configuration on the switch. So I'll just show you that. So I'll go into switch one. And if I do a show interface fast zero slash one and then switch port to see VLAN information, you can see that this is configured as an access port and it's currently in the default VLAN 1. And if I do a show VLAN brief, you see that VLAN 1 is actually the only VLAN that is configured on here, and all parts are in VLAN 1. So now if I go on to engineering PC1, because all PCs are in the same VLAN, and engineering 2 is also in the same IP subnet, I should have connectivity. So I'll ping it at 10.10.10.11, and you see that the ping succeeds. If I try to ping the sales PC though, which is at 10.10.20.12, this is going to fail. They're in the same VLAN at layer two, but it's in a different IP subnet at layer three. So I would need a router to be able to route traffic between the two different IP subnets. Now let's look and see what happens with broadcast traffic. So if I ping 10.10.10.255, which is the broadcast address for the subnet that this PC is in, I see I get a reply from Eng2 at 10.10.10.11. If we have a look at the lab topology, that traffic, its broadcast, isn't just hitting Eng2, it's also hitting Sales3 as well, because it's in the same VLAN. The switch is a layer 2 switch. It's not layer 3 aware. It doesn't know anything about different IP subnets, so it's flooding that broadcast traffic everywhere. So it's bad for performance and security. That traffic is hitting the sales PC as well as the engineering PCs. So that's why we're going to configure our VLANs. So let's do that now. So I'll go back onto the switch. I need to create my VLANs first. So I'll go to global configuration and I will create VLAN. We were going to use VLAN number 10 for the engineering subnet and I'm going to give it a name as well, name eng. You always want to give your VLANs a name. So if an ever engineer is looking at your config layer, it's going to be obvious about what you've configured. And I'll also configure my sales VLAN. We were going to use VLAN 20 for that. So VLAN 20 and name sales. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my engineering PC1 into the engineering VLAN. I'm not going to put Eng2 in there yet because I want to show you the effect of this. So Eng1 PC was on interface fast 0 slash 1. I'll say switch port mode access to make it an access port. In case you're wondering, the other type of port we can have is a trunk port. I'll cover that in the next lecture. So switch port mode access and switch port access VLAN 10. So if you look back at the topology diagram again, Eng1 is in VLAN 10. The other two PCs are still in the default VLAN 1. If I go on to the command line on Eng1, and I try to ping Eng2 at 10.10.11.now, the command is going to fail. We're in the same IP subnet, but we're in different VLANs at layer two. And the switch does not send traffic between different VLANs. So that's why the traffic is failing. And if I send broadcast traffic, ping 10.10.10.255, .10 .10 
because this PC is the only thing in VLAN 10. This won't hit anything else at all. This is good. This was the point of doing VLANs. It's to segment our broadcast domains. The problem is that we want the two PCs to be in the same VLAN though. So right now, we don't have any connectivity with each other. So let's fix that next. So I'll go back onto the switch configuration and eng2 was on interface fast 0 slash 2 and i'll use the up arrow to put in the command switch port mode access and switch port access vlan 10 and if i now go back on to eng1 again and if i try pinging the pc at 10.10.10.11 now then the ping should succeed if this fails, sometimes Packet Tracer will do this. I'm using Packet Tracer for the lab demo. So let's just flap the interface. So I'll go back onto the switch and I'll do a shut and a no shutdown on interface fast zero slash two to flap it. Let's just do interface fast zero slash one as well while we're at it. So shut and no shut on there and that should bring it back up again. So let's try the ping again now. Ping 10.10.10.11. And it's probably just taking a minute for the interface to come back up since I did a no shut. So let's give this a few seconds for the interface to come back. And I'll waffle for a few seconds until it does. I might need to do another ping here. So let's just wait for this one to time out. Okay, let's ping it again. Ping 10.10.10.11. Okay, there we go. So we got the reply now. So that's just a quirk in packet tracer. In a real world network, you would not need to shut down and no shut an interface because you changed the VLAN on it. Okay, so that's my engineering PCs with connectivity now. Next thing to do, let's go back onto the switch and put the sales PC into the correct VLAN. So that was on interface fast zero slash three, and I'll say switch port mode access, and switch port access VLAN 20. So looking back at the topology again, both my engineering PCs are in VLAN 10, my sales PC is in VLAN 20, so I've completed my configuration, everything should be all good now. For verification, we'll go back onto the switch, and I'll do a show VLAN brief, and you can see there's my engineering VLAN, VLAN 10, and interfaces fast 01 and 02 are there. And my sales VLAN 20 is configured with fast ethernet 0 slash 3. All of the other ports I haven't touched yet, so they are still in the default VLAN 1. Okay, so that was how we configure our VLAN access ports. See you in the next lecture for trunk ports.